Alrighty, we have our 100k DPS Dragon Knight. I'd mentioned this on the Arcanist video that this would be coming next, and uh, it is pretty soon for it to be coming from when I made the last video, but um, <clears throat> uh, this build was actually pretty easy to put together and extremely strong. This might be my best DPS potentially, aside from my Arcanist, but the Arcanist is kind of you don't need as much skill so we're gonna go over this and now the armor is gold and I will show a parse without the gold armor it, it's really an insignificant amount of damage so you do not need to gold out your armor so just keep that in mind as we're going over this now your weapons definitely 100% you want golded all right we're running pillar daggers <clears throat> Maelstrom Inferno staff these need to be golded it won't cost you nearly as much gold to gold these as it would armor, but for monster set, we are running Zons. This set is just the best here. I did try using things like Harpooner's Waiting Kill <clears throat> and whatnot, and it just was not doing it for me. All my Harpooner's Waiting Kill um, runs did less damage than the setup I have right now, so keep that in mind. Even, even in all purple armor, I will show... Uh, an all purple parse that I did just to show that it does not matter if you have your gear golded but <clears throat> we're running double light Zons on head and shoulder uh, that helps with the recovery and this build pretty much has sustained down to a T as a lot of my other builds actually do as well um, we're running five piece rally on the body uh, non perfected if you want perfected go ahead it's not needed here it's not a stand build. This is a mag dragonite. <clears throat> Obviously, pillar jewelry. Uh, I would definitely try and gold out your jewelry if you can. If you can't, it won't be the hugest deal. You will lose, I think, instead of gaining 350, you gain 315 a piece. So you will lose, uh, like, <clears throat> probably around 100 weapon and spell damage um, under that 90% health, uh, health threshold. So keep that in mind. So if you can't gold out your jewelry, definitely do it. But I understand golding out jewelry is also pretty expensive. So And it's not necessary. You still should be able to hit 100k without it. So keep that in mind. We're going to go over our abilities here. Uh, on the front bar, we are running Barb Trap, Camo Hunter, Molten Whip, our spammable, um, Burning Talons, and Venomous Claw. Burning Talons is insane. This thing does so much damage on top of... Allies can also synergize with this in actual trials and dungeons. So this is a must-have ability. This thing is absolutely cracked the amount of damage it brings in. When I show you the parses, it's it's insane. Um, Standard of Might must be running this as well. This thing also does insane amount of damage and also um, reduces your damage taken. So that never hurts. But this thing actually does so much damage. It's insanity. So definitely make sure you're running this. You're going to need this. <clears throat> Let's go to our back bar. We are running Blockade of Fire. Another really good ability. I'm pretty sure in the Dragonite passives, it increases just fire damage in general. And you will be able to see, yeah, it increases the damage of your flame and poison attacks by 5%. It is very noticeable, let me say, that you could tell that you're getting a boost. Especially even in something like Blockade of Fire. Definitely going to want to be... Uh, running this also for enchants because I forgot to mention running flame and poison That does matter as well <clears throat> Running camo hunter on the back just for some more passive weapon damage um, We are running eruption another great uh, damage over time that you're gonna want to run this thing also hits pretty damn hard I'll show you in the parses um, engulfing flames um, this isn't necessarily like insane. This could kind of be a flex spot if you wanted. It still does a lot of damage, so I definitely would recommend using it. And then affected enemies take more damage from all flame attacks based on your weapon damage for a maximum of 6% taken. So this is, we're getting an additional 4% value. I would just run this. It, it hits pretty hard still. It's probably our weakest dot, but it is still not weak by any means. And then Flames of Oblivion, this thing, also pretty crazy. Um, I did just notice now that this also gives you uh, Major Prophecy and Savagery, but I still like keeping this slotted 
for the weapon and spell damage same on the front bar but these could also be flex spots if you want to add a couple more dots in you could probably hit over a hundred um, and 4k DPS which was our what our best parse was so keep that in mind um, this this is not needed this is a huge flex spot I would probably just run standard and might I don't think there's any passives we get from having this slotted except maybe some health recovery which is kind of not needed here so um, yeah we're not really getting any passives from having that ultimate slotted so this is a huge flex spot if you want to try Dawnbreaker on the back I don't think I have it unlocked in this character yet so um, but personally I mean I would just leave standard of might just to make sure you're not missing throwing this down the as soon as you can because this thing is a powerhouse as you will see in the parse um, we're gonna go over champion points a little bit more in depth here <clears throat> mainly because there's a few things that I want to say first off running exploiter um, I was running dead lame at one point and I mean you can but the 10% damage overall is gonna be much better and usually in a trials somebody is going to knock the main boss off balance so this is just a passive 10% damage done so you're definitely gonna want that um, otherwise mastered arms and thaumaturge also going to want those just six percent more damage done with uh pretty much most of your abilities so now this last one we're running backstabber and at first i was running wrathful but we weren't hitting our 125 percent max critical damage we were still hitting 100k dps without it so if you want to run wrathful Go ahead. Um, my only thing with Backstabber is obviously uh, it's not always going to be able to consistently proc because certain bosses you're going to be moving around. You might not be able to hit them in the back. So that's the reason why I'm getting a little bit more in depth with the champion points. So if that is the case, if you are struggling to stay behind a boss or you know a specific boss is known for you not being able to hit them in the back, I would just swap that out for Fighting Finesse instead. You will lose 2%, but... I mean, you really actually kind of gain 8% because this is going to be consistent and you're not going to miss it. So keep that in mind. But on parses, definitely be uh, want to be running backstabber. So <clears throat> I'll go over the parse here. This is a parse I literally just did like five minutes before I made this video. Um, as you can see, Molten Whip hitting hard. Reliquin hitting hard blockade of fire. I mean that is insane. I think this is the highest amount of DPS I get I've gotten on blockade of fire over any other character. I'd have to double check and look uh, Light attack that speaks for itself. You're gonna want to be um, weaving <clears throat> Flames of oblivion going Crazy uh, this thing is an insane dot. So definitely make sure you're keeping up your dots as much as possible uh, one thing I do want to say with your dots is to um, make sure that you're letting them fall off before reapplying. You don't want to waste your resources and you want to get the maximum damage out of them. So you definitely want to reapply them as quickly as possible. Um, and with Flames of Oblivion, there's a bit more leniency. I would cast it with like one second left. It doesn't matter too much, but I would try to let your dots fall off and then immediately recast them. If you can't, I don't think it really matters that much, but just keep that in mind. Now burning, a lot of this is going to come from Zons. I imagine at least half of the DPS here is from Zons and the other half is just from your abilities and other things going on, which Zon hitting hard like always always prefers Zons over Kjolnar. Kjolnar does not hit as hard and only one person could run Kjolnar last time I checked anyways. <clears throat> Standard of Might hitting absolutely insanely hard as you can see. I think I cast this maybe two or three times maybe per parse and it's doing enough damage to count for 5,200 damage per second and a million of our overall damage so that is a pretty uh, significant thing to have and actually I think you can see the damage like arcs of when I'm like casting standard of might and my DPS is going back up and then as standard of might falls you know it starts going down and then gets cast again um, I'm pretty sure you can see that in this parse <clears throat> pillar obviously pillar just hits hard if we scroll down I'm pretty sure maybe that's yeah another 1300 there so pillars doing like 5900 so this it's just also hitting hard eruption hitting hard now burning talons 
This thing was ridiculous. So you could see 4,402 there. And then look at another 4,000 here. That's 8,402 damage per second, which puts it above blockade of fire. That is our third highest de damage dealing ability that we're running on this build. This thing is absolutely insane. Must run it. Like, and you definitely want to try and keep it up as much as possible. It's got a five second timer. This is your most intense ability to keep up but we have it slotted in our front bar and honestly since our other dots are so long like venomous claw and engulfing flames it actually is quite easy to keep it up so um but definitely gonna want to make sure you keep that up this thing is our one of our hardest hitting abilities so <clears throat> venomous claw also doing a ton of damage poisoned you're getting some of this from your weapon i'm sure but most of this is probably coming from venomous claw Venomous Claw doing even more damage down here. Oh, SC, I was wrong. Poison Weapon is hitting down here. So, um, yeah, Hammer Drink Barb Trap doing a ton of damage. I mean, the amount of damage you're dealing with this build is insanity. I mean, realistically, when you add up, like, all the other, like, you know, you take Pillar here, Pillar there, you're doing a million with Pillar. You take Eruption here, you take the other eruption damage down here you're doing a million with that i mean most of your abilities are doing a million damage over the course of this three minutes and 21 seconds of the parse that i have um since is insanity now this was with an all golded out thing so we will go over a non-golded out one which i think is right here yeah you can see we're running all purple armor now still gold on the jewelry so keep that in mind uh you might lose a little damage my Weave was a kind of slow on this as well, but still just hitting absolutely hard, still burning talons, just going absolutely crazy, 8,500, just sitting under Arms of Reliquin. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, you definitely don't need purple geared. Uh, I did want to go over some parses. See, these three parses are lower. This is actually with um, Harpooner's Weight and Kilt, uh, and it just, it just was not hitting as hard. It just wasn't doing it. Not getting as much damage with it. So I wouldn't recommend using it. I would just recommend having the build how we have it. With the 5 Reliquin on body and the Zons. I think the Zons really does make a difference in our damage. Zons is just an insane damage dealing monster set. So I would never advise running Kilt over this personally. If you want to run Kilt, you're still going to be able to reach 95 to 100k DPS. Depending. But um... I just wouldn't run it. Now we'll go over the uh, parse here. For the most part, I mean, we're sitting here at the beginning of this parse. I won't lie, it was pretty choppy. I was kind of misclicking. I missed some abilities. I messed up. I ended up pulling it back, and we were sitting around 100k for the rest of that parse. And if we go to like the 102k, we're pretty much sitting at 100k this whole parse because I wasn't making any mistakes. But you could see, like, Standard or Might, throwing that up, throwing all of our dots up, doing good. Damage starts to fall off. And then, oh, right here, Standard or Might starts to go up. Standard or Might falls off. You know, Standard or Might, it goes back up. So Standard or Might, you can really see the the kind of the dips in damage here. So definitely want to be running Standard of Might. That thing is insane for an ultimate. Um, well, that's really all I have to show. Uh, I kind of did this mainly because I saw somebody struggling with one of their uh, with their Dragonite build, and uh, I wanted to get that out here. Uh, as you can see, the sustain is good uh, for the most part. I mean, we are a little bit negative, but if you're in a trial or anything, or even on the dummy, you get uh, you know uh, what's it called a synergy um, potions. I do want to emphasize our potions here. We are running Essence of Spell Power to uh, get that major uh, sorcery and major uh, spell damage increase. So definitely want to be running these. And then we also get the recovery, which uh, in case you aren't familiar, we are running triple medicinal use. Uh, if you want to just power level alchemy, it'll cost you around like 300k. If you don't have the gold, that's fine. Just try and get this up slowly or just go out and scavenge a bunch of uh, alchemical ingredients and try and level this up as much as you can. Because this, this is a necessity on pretty much all damage dealing builds, if not even all builds, now that I really think about it. Um, 
But yeah, I think we covered everything. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I hope this video helps, and I hope some of my other videos have helped uh, anybody who's struggling to hit that 100k DPS uh, threshold. So that's kind of why I make these videos. You know, I see people using, like the guy that had brought this up on Reddit that kind of inspired me to even really get into uh, really exploring the Dragon Knight at that moment. He was using a build from, I think, Delta Ios, and I've tried Delta Ios' builds, I've tried Alcast builds, I've tried other people's builds. They just don't really work for me, they just haven't worked for me. So, um, that's why I make these videos. If they're not working for you, maybe this is something else you could try, and maybe this will work for you. Uh, one more thing to mention, the food, I was running Ghastly Eye Bowl. In an actual trial, feel free to run Max Health and max magica foods sustain shouldn't really be an issue in a trial so you probably don't need to run ghastly eyeball and you could run something that increases your max health but um if you were pretty good at dodging uh the ability or like the uh you know enemy attacks and pretty good at surviving uh you could probably just run this just run the glass cannon why not Otherwise, uh, health is sitting pretty low. As for race, just to mention race real quick before we get out of here, I am running Dark Elf um, to get that spell damage. And um, also, the, the boost to stamina is actually kind of significant here because if you don't remember, Molten Whip does cost stamina as well as Magicka, so keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, I believe I covered everything, and uh, like I said a couple minutes ago, I really hope this build that helped you, and I hope this helps you get to your ideal damage, and thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.